Hi everyone, welcome to a new tutorial video. This video is all about the July 2021 kit. First, I'll go over all the supplies that were included in this month's box. Then I'll launch into a tutorial. This particular kit is actually inspired by miniature furniture making. In particular, I've seen a miniature scale of 1 to 24 ratio becoming more and more popular these days. So I wanted to do something I haven't seen done before, which is to make a mold specifically for making furniture at this scale. So I went ahead and did that and curated a kit around this project. I hope you enjoy this video and if you want to learn more about Craft Kitsune, you can go to the website. Alright, so now let me show you everything that's in the July kit. You can actually still shop this kit while supplies last on the website as well as find out more about how to become a subscriber and all the subscriber benefits to joining Craft Kitsune. Let's quickly go over each of the items included starting with what was at the bottom of the box. So starting with this supply list and the artwork on this little insert is done by my sibling ether.j on Instagram. So there's the supply list and some instructions on the back as well. Next we have two real wood sheets and these sheets are thin enough to where you can cut them using scissors as seen here. So this will come in handy when we're decorating our furniture. So here's a close-up of the wood grain and I wanted to give a darker wood color option and then a lighter wood color option. Next we have the exclusive mold of the month and this was designed by yours truly and produced exclusively for Craft Kitsune. So you can only purchase this mold through the box or on our website and Craft Kitsune is imprinted on each of the molds. And then there are 10 different designs on the mold. I'll list them on the screen now, but we'll also get into them in more detail in the tutorial. Next, we have a bunch of different mediums to make our miniature furniture. First, we have some two-part resin, so clear two-part resin. This is particularly nice for making those larger furniture pieces, such as the bookshelf and the desk. Then we have a bottle of UV resin and this will be really nice for making those tiny pieces such as the jar and the books. Then we have a brush on super gloss sealant and this is nice for making resin pieces extra shiny and it's also really useful for applying the wood sheets seen just earlier onto the resin pieces. Then we have this double ended silicone tool. One side is more of a needle tool and the other side is a spreading tool, nice for spreading around layers of resin. And then finally we have this miniature computer and I thought this was a fun addition to complete a study or workspace. And that's it for the included supplies, so now let's jump into the tutorial. As usual, I'm protecting my work surface with a silicone mat. I'll be working with resin, both two-part and UV resin, so I'm wearing my nitrile gloves and I have my UV lamp ready off to the side. I'm also wearing a respirator because I'm working with resin. Here I am making some of the books to start with. I'm using colored UV resin that I have on hand, but you can also mix in pigments and alcohol ink to your clear resin to make it whatever color you want. So this is just my method of making the books. So I start with a very small layer of UV resin at the bottom of each of the closed books designs. And then I'm using the needle tool just to spread it out, make sure it's hitting all of the cavity on the bottom. The books have a lot of little details, so I find this pretty necessary to do. And then I'm going to use my UV lamp on this initial layer for about a minute. If you're new to UV resin, I recommend watching the intro to UV resin videos on this channel. And then now I'm going in with a opaque white UV resin. So the purple are the covers for the books and then this white are the pages. For the open style book, the pages are at the bottom of the mold. So you'll want to do your white UV resin or whatever color resin you want the pages first. And then I use my needle style tool again just to spread it out, make sure it's hitting all of the crevices of this mold. And then I am going to cure it using my UV lamp. So opaque UV resin does take longer to cure than transparent UV resin, so I like to give it extra time. You also want to work in very thin layers when using opaque UV resin. In general with UV resin you want to work in thin layers, curing them one at a time. 
This will prevent your design from having hollow parts in the middle of it due to undercured or uncured UV resin. After I've cured this white layer, I'm going to go in with that same purple color and make the covers for the closed books, the second side, and then for the open book as well, make the cover. And then I also somewhat randomly decided to make a chair base using the same purple UV resin. And then I give this a final cure with my UV lamp. After this cure, my pieces are fully hardened, so I can take them out of the mold. So I'm just going to pop them out of the mold. And then I'm going to set the books to the side as I make the rest of the mold. So I'll add the books to the bookshelf later. So now I'm going to make one of the window panes. So I'm using the same opaque UV resin that I do with the books. So I like to make some books at the same time. And then now I'm going to make a chair as well. So I'm going to make a gray base for the chair. At this point, I hadn't decided if I wanted to use that purple base I already made or this gray base. But in any case, <laughs> that rhymed. <laughs> I want to make sure that the resin seeps all the way down because there is that cylinder that will attach to the chair. So I'm taking my needle tool and making sure the resin has gone all the way into the crevices of the mold. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to take my UV lamp and hit everything with it. And I'm going to leave everything under the UV lamp for at least three minutes. And then I actually got the idea to make a rainbow chair because I had a bunch of different colors of UV resin. So I'm kind of tilting it because I'm going to be doing it in lines and I don't want the red line for instance to spread too much along the mold. So I'm doing a line of the red and then I'm curing that with my lamp. And then I repeat this process until I have a rainbow of colors. To be honest, I ran out of colors before I made it to the end of the chair, so I just added a white seat to the chair. So I gave everything a final cure, and then once it's fully hardened, I'm going to actually add a clear back to everything before I pop it out of the mold. So I'm just using clear UV resin, spreading it all the way around, and then hitting that with my UV lamp. Alright, so now all the pieces are ready to demold, so here's a fast forward of me taking all of the pieces out of the mold. And this is how I like to combine the two pieces of the chair. So I put a little dot of super glue on the swivel base and then I take the main part of the chair and put it on top and on center. This super glue does harden really quickly, which is nice. You can also use UV resin to do this step as well. Use the needle tool to add a little dab of UV resin and then attach the two pieces and hit it with a UV light. And then the chair is done and now I'm going to show you a tip for finishing off the book. So this is the open style book and I just use opaque UV resin in the mold itself in white. And now I'm going in with another color for the cover and then I'll spread this around the back of it and cure it. Alright so now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and show you how I make some of those larger pieces. I apologize, I forgot to film me pouring the resin into the mold. I must have forgot or maybe it was dark and the camera wouldn't have picked it up that well or something. But I poured two part resin into each of the cavities of the mold. And then I actually use the same two part resin that I used in the previous video. So if you want to see me mixing up this resin, you can go watch the June 2021 tutorial video. So I'm just unmolding all of the pieces here. The bookshelf and desk are the hardest pieces to unmold, so just be patient and kind of work it out of the mold, being gentle to the mold so that you don't tear it. Next, I'm going to turn my desk into a wooden desk. So I already took that darker color of wood paper and I cut it to size for the top of this desk. I'm using super glue to adhere the sheet to the desk, but you can also use that gloss sealant to do this step as well as UV resin. So now I'm going in with the super gloss sealant and I'm brushing it along the top of the desk. This will give it that nice laminated shiny look that you find in nice desks. That shiny top coat will dry within half an hour, so now I'm just going to make some jars while I wait. These jars can be used on the bookshelf or in the desk, on top of the desk, or in any number of other projects. The jar design is hollow, so you can put miniature things inside of it. Also, apologies for the lighting. My camera must have been on a different setting than normal. 
I'm just taking my clear UV resin and putting it in the two jar cavities. So we have the main part of the jar, the base of the jar, as well as a lid. I take the needle tool to make sure that the resin has gone all the way around and into the jar. And then I hit both of the pieces with my UV lamp for one to two minutes. And then they are ready to unmold. Oops, I think I almost lost the lid. Be careful not to lose the lids, they're pretty tiny. So here's the jar and the lid. So now I've shown you how to do each of the designs of the mold. So I'm going to do one more thing before putting them all together and showing you some finished looks. So here I am customizing my miniature computer. I'm going to paint it black, cue music. I'm doing this so that it'll match better with my overall study room scene. That's because I applied the darker of the two wood sheets on the desk and I also put it on the bookshelf as well. After the paint dries, I apply my super gloss sealant to give it a shiny look and to also seal in the paint. Alright, so that's it in terms of the tutorial portion. So as promised, let me show you how everything looks all together. So first up, we have this garden style shelf and I filled the jars with some miniature plants from the March kit actually. I made the bookshelf completely clear from clear resin as you can tell. And then here it is behind a couple desk setups. Oops, I knocked over a bookshelf. Luckily, it doesn't have anything in it. So I film most of my finished shots as well as take a lot of pictures on my balcony. So here's a little friend that joined me. Here's a study inside of a shadow box that I made using the prior kit, the June kit. So here's the project I actually showed off in the last video, the June video, as I made the shadow box using the supplies from the June kit and then I filled it with furniture from this video, the July kit. I'm taking these artificial flowers, really small artificial flowers from the March kit and adding one to a jar on top of the desk. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you have fun making your own miniature furniture. Again, if you want to learn more about Craft Kitsune and our monthly craft subscription service, you can go to the website. And thank you so much for watching all of this video. For more inspiration, you can watch one of these other tutorial videos, but otherwise I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!